Welcome to a new vlog. Today we are taking a closer look at this module which I showed in a previous mailbag video. It's a boost module based on the TPS61088 from Texas Instruments. And starting with the physical construction, the quality of this PCB and of the assembly seems decent. It has a good solder joints except for an issue I identified with the USB connector the mechanical mounting points haven't been uh, soldered to the PCB but overall like I said decent construction uh, on this PCB the uh, DC to DC boost converter is paired with another chip that handles uh, USB quick charge switching uh, capability so the module is uh, able to uh, output voltages up to 12 volts so here are the specs given by the uh, seller of the module they claim an input voltage of 2.8 up to 4.5 volts which uh, kind of makes it ideal to be powered from a single lithium cell the maximum output current is 3 amps at 5 volts with a maximum output power of 24 watts they claim a typical efficiency of 90%, so that would mean the circuit would have about 2.4 watts of losses at maximum output power, which would have to be turned into heat. This video is sponsored by JLCPCB.com who recently upgraded their offer so you now get 24 hours turnaround time and you can choose any solder mask color for the same price of just $2. Prototyping is now faster and cheaper, so it's definitely worth checking them out. I'm pretty sure that would cause this uh, small module to uh, get uh, quite hot with 2.4 watts being dissipated. But before we move on to testing that, let's take a quick look at the datasheet of the chip. So TI is claiming 10 amps for this chip. It's written with the big characters right in the first line of this datasheet. But then if you follow the datasheet just below, it says it's 10 amps switching current, not necessarily output current. So looking at the typical characteristics curves, we see that their efficiency curve kind of stops at around 7 amps. So I guess it's not really possible to go over 7 amps output current with this chip and even then it would require a decently sized inductor and filtering capacitors and if the efficiency goes below 90% uh, certainly this chip would not be able to handle that amount of uh, power dissipation given the fact that the MOSFETs are internal to the chip and also it's likely that the uh, switching current uh, will go over 10 amps which might damage the uh, MOSFETs but the makers of this module have been decent and they only claim an output current of 3 amps at 5 volts. And is that possible? Well, we'll find out soon. But since that test poses the risk of damage, let's first measure other things with uh, less risk of damage. I have soldered a couple of wires to the module to be able to connect to this uh, 2S pack made out of uh, 18650 cells. This pack should be able to provide even up to 10 amps of uh, current to the input of this module to cover its uh, power needs. I also have a multimeter to measure the uh, voltage of the pack and this uh, clamp meter to measure the uh, DC current at the input of our module. I also have this uh, USB tester or dummy load which has the capability to trigger the various quick charge modes. In fact, it has this very useful test feature which will automatically test for 5, 9 and 12 volts with any quick charge compatible charger. So I will put a link to this in the description below so you can check it out. As you saw, the auto test gave the OK for uh, 3 up to uh, 12 volts adjustment on the quick charge uh, protocol. And there is even this mode where I can go in and manually adjust the voltage. As you can see here, I'm slowly increasing the uh, voltage up to 12 volts. So it's quite a versatile uh, tester for USB power supplies. Up to this point we can safely say the quick charge functionality is working as it should on this uh, small module and there wasn't any reason to think otherwise because they're using this uh, built-in quick charge controller. 
Next, let's take a look at the output noise and I'll be using my oscilloscope for this. Channel 1 is set for AC input. We have the uh, bandwidth filter turned on, peak mode uh, detection and I have turned off all of the LED lighting I have in here to avoid inserting any common mode noise so the image will be a bit grainy but it's best to leave it like this for the measurement. And I'm also using the uh, short ground connection on the probe uh, so to avoid any common mode uh, noise pickup. So here are the results I got. First 5 volts at 0.2 amps. This is a light load. We can see the noise level is quite high about 60 millivolts peak to peak while at 1 amp the noise drops to half of that just 30 millivolts peak to peak. This is probably a consequence of the DC to DC controller operating in a different mode at light loads. This is good to know if you plan to use this boost converter with light loads. Next I've measured 5 volts at 2 amps and I got about 50 millivolts peak to peak noise and 5 volts at 3 amps I got 70 millivolts peak to peak noise. Then I switched on to 9 volts and at 1 amp output the noise increased to 95 millivolts peak to peak and notice how the vertical scale has changed to 20 millivolts per division. 9 volts at 2 amps it was 150 millivolts peak to peak. Next I switched to 12 volts and at 1 amp I got 160 millivolts peak to peak and the vertical scale was once again adjusted and 12 volts at 2 amps I got 224 millivolts peak to peak noise. I think these are some decent results for the size of the module, certainly usable for applications where a low noise power supply is not required like for example for charging a device. And if it's needed, the output noise can be filtered even more by adding your own filter. Something like an LC circuit would help in this case. I left the module running by dumping 24 watts, 12 volts, 2 amps into the load and it immediately reached scorching hot temperatures on the surface of the controller chip or the inductor. As you can see in this overlay captured with the FLIR thermal camera, I had temperatures of 140 degrees Celsius in about 5 minutes of running time. And maybe 10 minutes into the test the temperature increased to over 150 degrees Celsius and my FLIR thermal camera cannot measure temperatures above 150 degrees Celsius. Now the datasheet claims a maximum junction temperature of 150 degrees Celsius so I'm not sure how the chip was still working at that temperature. Maybe it was right at, at the limit and it hasn't triggered uh, the protection yet or maybe my FLIR camera doesn't measure the temperature that accurately. In any case after another 10 minutes of running so about 20 minutes in, in total the controller started going into protection. It was the uh, thermal cut off and then it was cycling back on after a second or two when the junction temperature was dropping below uh, its uh, protection limit. So I guess the real limitation for this small module to output the claimed 24 watts for longer periods of time is the uh, temperature. There is not enough thermal dissipation happening in this uh, small PCB. Now having maybe a, a bigger PCB with four layers with more copper would help and it would probably allow this module to output continuously and uh, maybe prevent the uh, TI controller chip from going into thermal overload. But even so I was impressed that uh, running it into thermal protection several times did not do any damage to the chip, uh, it just recovered on its own each time the output voltage got back to whichever value it was set and uh, it, it just started working again and no magic smoke was escaped during these uh, tests. So all of this considered this is probably one of the best DC to DC boost converter modules I got from China so far and I would recommend getting one of these uh, if the specs meet your needs. Uh, I think even if you really need to output uh, 12 volts 2 amps continuously I think that is possible if you attach this uh, PCB to a heatsink. As usual I will uh, put links in the description below for the items uh, shown in this video. I would love to hear your feedback in the comments below so let me know what you think. Thank you for watching this video and I'll see you next time with a new video.